gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he lay the undefiled to the world a stranger. Such a babe in such a place, can he be the Savior? Ask the saved of all the race who have found his face. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor, sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O oh, sing, sing to, to the, the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He, he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness, and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. 
He who sang creation's story Now proclaim Messiah's birth Come and worship, come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King All creation joy in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday after Christmas is from Isaiah, chapters 61 and 62. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting God, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son than an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory be to thee. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples 
a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for your glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. God has made us his people by our baptism into Christ, Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, I uh, spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Grace in love. 
Eternal Lord God, in the fullness of time you sent forth your Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us and give us the adoption as your sons and heirs. Hear us, Father, as we call to you in his name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and grant us a glad new year. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please be seated. When God makes a promise to you, it may not be fulfilled quite as you expect. And I suspect that that's exactly the way it was for Simeon. We're told it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now that's quite a promise when you come to think about it. Simeon would get to see with his own eyes, face to face, what neither Abraham or Isaac or Jacob had the opportunity to see. He would get to see with his own eyes what not Moses or Joshua or David or Solomon would see. God promised Savior in the flesh. Think about that for a moment, that kind of promise that's made to you. You don't know how it's going to turn out, but you believe the word, you trust God, because we know he's a righteous and devout man, Simeon was, but we don't know how long he waited for the promise to be fulfilled. Now, it's usually assumed, and you see how that usually assumed happens if you look at the front of your bulletin this morning, and the figures who are displayed there, the old guy on the right, I'm assuming from the, from the artist's rendition that that's supposed to be Simeon. However, and I thought about this after the first service, however, there's no guarantee that we could assume that Simeon's an old guy. Everybody does that. And what made me further rethink of this is that later on when it talks about Anna, it tells us that she was a kindly old lady, older lady. And if you think about it, if she got married 14, 15, lived with her husband seven years before he died, she's 21, 22. And then the rest of the year, 60 some years, she's in the temple praying and fasting night and day. Yeah, she's 84 years old. Okay, we know that, but we don't know that about Simeon. Now, it's one thing to be told that, you're, that you've been given this promise by the Lord and you've waited your entire life, Simeon had, and maybe now in his old age, if that's the way it works, in his old age, the promise was made anew to him that he would see the Lord's Christ before he died. But let's turn the tables a little bit on Simeon and let's assume for a moment that he's not that old. Let's grant for a moment that maybe Simeon is 30, 40, 50 years old, and he's got the promise that he would not die before he sees the Lord's Christ. Now, it makes it a little bit more dramatic, dramatic than when he sees Jesus, God's promised Messiah, in the flesh, and takes him in his arms, and then prays, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace. I did a little bit different impact if you're 30, 40, or 50, and you can say, okay, Lord, now I can die in peace. I'm ready to go right now. Could you say that if you were younger? And most of you aren't of that much of an advanced year that, you know, you're, you've reached the end of the life and you've said, I've lived it all, and now it's time to go. But now, in the prime of life, when God made the promise to Simeon, what did he see? What did he see? What did he expect? A full-grown Messiah? A glorious figure? A mighty warrior? Well, we don't know that either, but we do know what he did see. A young, humble carpenter and his wife and a 40-day-old child. And they had been there to do for the child and for Mary what the law of the Lord required to offer the sacrifice of two turtle doves or two pigeons. 
And what makes it even more interesting is they may not have been, Mary and Joseph and Jesus, they may not have been the only ones taking care of those legal matters that day in the temple. The temple was a busy place. Sacrifices were always going on. People were coming and going. All kinds of commotion there. But in the midst of it all, when Simeon sees this child, The Holy Spirit prompts him, and faith believes what eyes could not see, that this child, this little guy, is the Holy One of God. You couldn't have picked him out unless you had that extra help from the Holy Spirit. And he wouldn't have known either unless the Holy Spirit prompted him to know that this child was to be the sin offering for the sin of the whole world as he recounts in the song that he sings. And so great was his joy that he takes that child, Jesus, up in his arms and praises God. Now, I'm not so sure that Mary liked that part very much, but all she and Joseph could do would be to stand there and marvel. And even though this was their child, at the same time, he really wasn't their child, but he was everyone's child. And for Mary, this wouldn't be the last time Jesus would be taken from her later on. Many years down the road, he would be taken from her and hung on a cross. He would be taken later from her arms and laid in a tomb. And at those times, then she would feel the sword that Simeon spoke about, how it would pierce through her own soul too. When God makes a promise to you and to me, it may not always be fulfilled quite as you and I would expect it to be, And so I suppose that we could learn a lot from Simeon. For we too have received great and precious promises from God. And we wonder sometimes how they're going to be fulfilled. We may be quite surprised, but we do know this. No matter how God fulfills his promises to us, because of Jesus, because of his death and resurrection, we have this to be sure of. No trial, no tragedy, not even death matters anymore. Oh, it affects us now for a time. And it hurts us. And we're pained by those kinds of things. But we have something even more sure, the promise of everlasting life, so that no matter what happens, nothing in this world, nothing that can come at us, no assault of the devil, no evil in this world can tear us out of the Father's hand. Nothing like that could separate us from God's love in Christ. And we do have this assurance, too, that unless Jesus comes first, we all will still die. But because he has risen from the dead, we know that we'll live, too. Death will not hold us. Death has been defeated. The grave conquered. And because of Jesus, because of his atoning sacrifice for our sins, because he made himself our substitute under God's righteous wrath, and paid for our sins with his own shed blood, we have forgiveness for every sin that we've ever committed, known and unknown. And none of those stand against us anymore. They're wiped clean. The slate is clean. We've been robed with a righteousness that's not our own. We've received the garments of salvation that Isaiah talked about. And as Paul reminds us in the epistle, we have received this adoption as sons because of this one in the fullness of time who was born of a woman and born under the law so that he could redeem you and me who are under the curse of that law. Because of Jesus, we've been set free. Set free from the power and the dominion of the devil. And though he will still attack us and still tempt us and try to deceive us with every false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice, he will have no power over us because of Jesus we have favor with God. He is our Father in heaven. And he has promised that no matter what comes our way, everything from God's hand toward us, what we would consider the good, the bad, the ugly, everything is for our good, for those who love him. That that good may come through a cross. It may come through some hardship or difficulty we work through, some suffering, or some other kind of sword that we find feels like it's piercing through our own souls too. 
And the truth is, God sometimes hide himself, hides himself in what looks to be the opposite. Can you imagine looking at that child in Simeon's arms and knowing that that's the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and yet he humbled himself and to take on that form? We already sang about that this morning in our hymns. But this was our Savior who would defeat death by dying, by submitting to it, and then bursting forth on Easter, alive from the grave, canceling its verdict over us once and for all and forever, that God would rescue us from suffering and turmoil by taking that suffering into himself. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with the struggles we have in this life, but we have one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. What Jesus has done as our Redeemer, he's done for our world too. Which brings us to the next point of rejoicing for us. Because of Jesus, every firstborn son, or not only every firstborn son, but every person in the world, can now be made holy to the Lord. Every person ever who by grace through faith have been baptized into Christ and joined to him have the right of firstborn sons, inheritors of the riches of heaven. And just as Jesus was presented in the temple on that day, so someday, when he brings all of this to an end and ushers in the new kingdom, we have this assurance that your Lord, Jesus, will present you to his Father in heaven, pure and holy and unstained, because he has been the sacrifice to redeem you and to make you holy, his saints. And that is exactly what you and I are because of him. So don't worry if the promise of the new year may not work out the way you'd hope it to. But we do know the promise is this, that no matter where we go and whatever days are ahead of us, whatever the future holds, our Savior is walking with us, holding us with his strong hand. And even though at times we don't feel much like saints or feel like we look like them, we need to learn to believe what we hear from him and not necessarily what we see in our, with our eyes to hear what we remember from our baptism. When our Lord promised us that we too will see with our own eyes Christ our Savior that we now see by faith that one day we will see face to face. But we will know that no matter where we go, we will take our place one day with Simeon and Anna, Joseph and Mary, and all the saints around the throne of the Lamb and his kingdom that will have no end. And until that day comes, his presence in our life would cause us to continue to bless and praise God who keeps his promises to us. May God grant us faith to trust those promises every day. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that surpasses our understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ until life everlasting. We rise and join together in singing the offertory. Jesus Christ, we believe that your advent, as our Savior was foretold by men of old, we believe that in your lowly birth to the Virgin Mary, the scriptures have been fulfilled, and that you, the very Son of God, through whom all things were created, took on our human form. We believe that you came here in lowliness as the Paschal Lamb of God to bear our sins in your own body on the cross and to suffer and die there for us. Is not this a wonder? that earth played host to her creator, and that you who are eternal were born in a tiny infant? Is not this a wonder 
that you who are rich with all the fullness of power and majesty as God became poor, that through the poverty of your humiliation you might make us everlastingly rich. O Jesus, Son of God and Savior of mankind, who you are and what you did on our behalf fills us with holy awe and wonder and deserves our constant praise. When with aged Simeon held you in his arms, he recognized you with great joy as the long-awaited Savior, the light of the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. Filled with peace and joy, he was ready to depart this life, an heir of heaven, saved by grace through faith. Like Simeon of old, we also rejoice to know you as our Savior from sin. Establish our hearts forever in the truth that your perfect sacrifice has purchased pardon and peace from God for us. Keep us ready at all times to depart this life with joy, confident in the assurance that you have redeemed us with your blood. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood on earth is named, bless the families of all Christians with your promises. Give parents diligence and delight in their work, and grant your favor on all children, that they may grow in strength and wisdom. Bless all widows, orphans, and broken families also with your mercy, and give them joy in the redemption. Gracious Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer from loneliness or illness. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, will bring healing to their lives. Father of lasting peace, we pray that you would show your mercy to those who receive the Lord's Supper this day, that they would behold their salvation in the body and blood of Christ given for them, and with St. Simeon be well prepared to depart in peace according to your word. Send the bright rays of your gospel into hearts everywhere, and by the Holy Spirit quicken them with a living faith as, your, as their personal Savior. Direct also the governments of the world so that people may worship and serve you without fear of persecution. Grant that those who have been brought to faith will remain constant in the faith and obtain everlasting life. Direct our footsteps in the new year by your holy word and help us by your love to lead lives that conform to your holy will. Hear us, O Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For Christ the name of God that takest away the sin of the world have mercy upon us. bless you and keep you with his love and in his care. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. Lord, now let us thy thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen.
Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas.